Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Konrad Gorlinski and this is the news. Rising energy prices, migration and the next wave of pandemics were the topics of the final day of the European Council summit. Leaders also discussed alleged issues with the rule of law in Poland. The head of the Polish government, Mateusz Morawiecki, said there are no limits to Polish sovereignty and the EU is overstepping limits which were imposed by European treaties. The European Commission was supposed to accept the Polish National Recovery Plan by August 1st. It did not. The plan wasn't rejected either. Contrary to its own rules, the European Commission suspended the first tranche of 4.7 billion euro in order to leverage political pressure on Poland. According to legal advisor Andrzej Dramiński, the European Union is violating Polish sovereignty and using the National Reconstruction Fund as a punitive measure. It's never been mentioned since Poland joined the European Union that European Union law is more important than the Constitution. This would have been unacceptable then, and it is just as unacceptable now. Dr. Sebastian Gajewski points out that the delay in allocating KPO funds to Poland is detrimental to all member states. After all, all our economies form a common market, and all economies will be able to recover from the coronavirus crisis thanks to this credit. The adopted resolution criticizes the verdict of the Constitutional Tribunal of October 7th, which, according to MEPs, is an attack on the European community of values. The authors of the resolution stress that the decision of the Constitutional Court may have a negative impact on judges, who may be afraid to take advantage of European law. It's precisely against the people who want an independent judiciary, but the opposition wants to maintain the status quo by means of blackmail. Former Secretary General of the Constitutional Council of France, Jean-Luc Schottel, points out that EU treaties leave the internal organization of the judiciary, as well as social issues, to member states. According to him, the financial blackmail of Poland and Hungary is contrary to EU law morally scandalous, but also contrary to the principle of good cooperation between European nations. There have been two violations of the law in the case of Brussels' reaction and sanctions to the decisions of the Polish Constitutional Court. It is interference contrary to the principles governing the relationship between constitutional law and European law, and interference involving the abuse of power by EU bodies. The Reconstruction Fund is the European Union's response to threats and challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The main objective of the fund is to rebuild and restore the resilience of EU economies to possible crises. If approved, Poland could receive a total of 57 billion euros, consisting of 23 billion euros in grants, plus 34 billion euros in preferential loans. The Solidarity Trade Union organized a demonstration outside the headquarters of the Court of Justice of the EU in Luxembourg. Miners protested against the illegal attempt to shut down the Turuf mine. The injunction was issued in violation of European law and with an abuse of judicial power. In response, trade unionists have published their own injunction on the European Union's Court of Justice. That is why we are here as representatives, telling you, warning you, and giving you time to think. If not, we will set fire to Europe and fend off those idiots who are destroying tens of thousands of jobs and want to deprive tens of millions of Poles of their electricity. Let me be clear, they want to deprive Poland and Europe of energy security. We will not allow this to happen. They treated us worse than cattle. The European Commission has banned the fencing of pastures with barbed wire. And here, half the city is fenced off. And this is against us, against the Poles, against the Solidarity Trade Unionists. It's starting to feel like deja vu for us Poles. And four people have died as a result of the storm that is passing over Poland. Firefighters responded to more than 10,000 calls. The wind blew at speeds of up to 140 kilometers per hour, knocked down trees and damaged buildings and vehicles. 
The worst was in Lower Silesia, where four people died and 18 were injured, including seven firefighters. As far as fatal casualties are concerned, two people were crushed by a tree that fell onto their car. Uh, this was in Wrocław. Also in the Wrocław district, strong winds knocked down a wall at a construction site and crushed one person. And then on National Road number 7, strong gusts blew a delivery vehicle off the road and unfortunately the driver of the vehicle did not survive. The fire service is still clearing the damage caused by the storm. At the same time, it's appealing for people to secure any objects left outdoors, such as potted plants, garden furniture or tools. It's also asking everyone not to park their cars under trees. As of midnight until 9 in the morning, the fire service responded to about 500 calls, so we are already seeing a decline, and we're concentrating on completing the tasks that we began last night, as well as removing fallen trees and debris which remains uncleared but also securing residential and commercial buildings. The Institute of Meteorology and Water Management issued first-level warnings, which were in force in the Lubelskie, Lubuskie, Wielkopolskie, Łódzkie and part of the Podlaskie Wojewodeship, and second-level warnings for the Zachodniopomorskie, Pomorskie, Warmińsko-Mazurskie and Northern Podlaskie Wojewodeships. Still tonight, in some areas, there will be some winds gusting at over 70 kilometers an hour, but this will be in the early hours of the evening. The exception will be the coast, which could still see gusts of over 90 to 100 kilometers an hour. During the night, the situation will begin to improve. By the morning, the winds will slow to 70 kilometers an hour, and in the rest of the country, up to 60 to 65 kilometers an hour. Strong winds will accompany us into tonight and also from Saturday to Sunday. On Sunday, there should be a significant improvement in the weather. Finally, Hungary is celebrating the 65th anniversary of their anti-communist uprising. Soviet troops killed at least 2,500 Hungarians and 20,000 were wounded. Members of the Gazeta Polska clubs traveled to Budapest to express support for a common cause, Europe's freedom. Nenzetienet in the Hungarian language means Republic Day. It's a great holiday for the Hungarians celebrated since 1989 in memory of the Hungarian uprising in 1956 when the Hungarian people rebelled against the Soviet occupation. A very large group of Gazeta Polska club members took part with editor-in-chief Tomasz Sakiewicz. This uprising also had a large Polish context because it started with a statue of Ben. Uh, it started with a reaction to what happened in Poland, to the demonstration in Poznań, to the awakening of the Poles and to their fight for sovereignty. The Hungarians wanted to show their support and the Hungarian internal security services began shooting at them. To the astonishment of the world, however, the Hungarian citizens disarmed the security services and took over Budapest. It took a Soviet intervention to regain control of the city. Today is very symbolic because the Polish and Hungarian fight for freedom has transformed into the Polish and Hungarian fight for sovereignty in the European Union. Wreaths were laid at the memorials to Joseph Bem and to the victims of the Katyn massacre. I'm very happy about this holiday. This is for us a great holiday. A holiday which in my youth for long decades could not be mentioned in any way. But now we can and must because this uprising in 1956 was a great burst of the Hungarian nation when the Hungarian nation regained its honor. As usual, thanks for tuning in with us this evening. Please stick with us uh, for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business and other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful Friday night.